which appears to be on the other side of the river towards the teleportation circle. Can you repeat that? Uh, that was just what Eclipse has picked up from walking through Yanway. Where is the teleportation circle? Is it the number 4 one? It is indeed. And the library sh or the books should be. Books aren't on here. Um, one of the shops would have been around here. You have one towards over here. Temples are around here. Hmm. I'll update the map shortly as soon as my computer finishes loading up. This here, did we? Um... That's the building that seems reminiscent of the one in um, Rast. Rast. Uh, but it seems like the two buildings are joined in one, whereas oh, in Rast they're split into. So probably one is the older Shaltier, and the other one is um, the library, which is also the older Shaltier in right there. Probably. So, the whereabouts away at the moment? Oh, what the hell is going on over here? It looks like uh, the city's been sieged. Or is That's that the about tower. the what? That's the wizard's tower. Yeah, the explosion. Oh, did we go there? Yeah, we did last session. And, and uh, yeah, it's basically, what you awesome. gather is that this wizard lives. He used to live within the confines of the city, but due to the nature of his, his experiments, pretty much blown up this tower almost every day. Um, they had to relocate his tower slightly outside, but that doesn't seem to minimize the damage that it's done. <laughs> so he made the hole in the wall. Tickle <laughs> 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 someone's pickle. But yeah, um, what's the plan for Are you going for, looking for one of the book market stalls, one of the book shops, or the library? The library. Library, okay. Uh, just as a point of interest, are you guys going past the teleportation circle, or are you taking the upper route? Upper route. There are some a plot. Okay, where are we? You guys are in the market around the top side of it. And where do we want to go? Order a shelter library. Uh, I don't want to walk past it because I'm feeling so much like of it. Yeah, I'd say we walk past the teleportation mm -hmm. circle. That's the nearest way. I I would actually like to see the town. So. I guess I'll follow them. Something tells me uh, going uh, toward the teleportation circle would be a, a bad idea, but... I mean, so far it's my decision. It's just logical to me that we would take the shortest route, but we could take a longer route if you want a metagame, or you, you actually want to make an opinion decision uh, because your character wants to see the town. Either way is fine. Yeah, but he did say... We're better at gaming right now, but he did say like the uh, there was. So it's not really a matter gaming. You guys kind of know the layout of the city from what you've been walking around. Not uh, around yeah, but it. making an opinion and uh, making a decision if we go to the. Shen, did you say there was like books around this area? I, I just asked which way you guys wanted to go. Like, do you want to go? The bridge, go or do you want to the the yeah, but. Meta gaming is because we, we think that something's now at the teleportation circle and they want to avoid it apparently be because of that information. That does sound like meta gaming to me. I mean, you guys can think whatever the hell you want. <laughs> it's not my decision to tell you what to think. I'm just here to enable you to do things. Well, so well, uh, look, seriously, no one is stopping you, but I'm gonna walk that way. We're gonna well, follow you. You can make decision. Actually, Tiffany's the team leader, isn't she? Who's walking where? I'm following the the, the broader team. She is. Who uh, who decided that? 
We had decided well, that at the very beginning. We needed yeah. a leader, and we said Tiffany's gonna be the leader. I carry the moonmans. Oh, right, after your protest. Fine, so, can you use Are we walking? Who wants to walk where? I don't really care. Uh, I just, in my opinion, the shortest way to where we want to go is through the teleportation circle. Faster, <laughs> right, okay. What about you? Where do you want to go? I want to go through the city, so where... Uh, so do I, just because I have a feeling so it will pop out the circle. Haha, <laughs> it's Seldor! Okay. Well, let's go through this, the city then. Well, I, I don't want to say anything, but... Uh... This has been made. We're going through the city. <laughs> so now let's move on. You guys um, depart from the market stand. You leave... Um, Aslan, very happy. Aslan, sitting, Aslan. sitting very happy at his stall. Um, you make your way up past the uh, the Radiant District, um, past the temples. You pass a few um, upper class looking buildings, uh, a few gardens here and there. Um, some shops. Flower garden? Flower? Yeah, yeah there's, there's flowers in a few of these gardens. Uh, most of them don't seem to be focused around the flowers themselves, though. Um, more upon the paths leading up to buildings. Um, the flowers that you do see that are mainly there for like decoration and such are mainly along the riverbank. Is this a human city, by the way? Um, not particularly. Uh, w w uh, what are the, the um, buildings made of? Are they like cobblestone or what? Uh, I don't know. Uh, different types of stone. Um, some are cobble. Some appear to be like a refined form of slate. Um, others appear to be uh, some smooth like almost perfectly smooth stone with um, marble inlays and such. But for the most part, it just seems to be made of different types of stone. Uh, and uh, did Marduk uh, has been here and order business before? You, you, you've passed through. You haven't really stopped in to admire the city itself. I see. Okay. So yeah, I'm admiring the city right now. Yeah, and um, there's a lot more bustle here than you remember from the last time that you were here. Um, bustle, what do you mean? It's a lot more lively. Um, more people. From, yeah, from the time that you were here, it would have been in the rule of King Oswin. Yeah, Oswin! He was the bad guy, wasn't he? King Oswin, or... he... No, he's the murdered one. Mm -hmm. King Oswin has recently passed away, yes. Yeah, he was the murdered... Yes. ...kid. Cool. His nickname, Oswin the Savior, in fact. Mm-hmm. Ooh! Um, I did not know that. Give me a sec. But yeah, he, he was the king who... ...ended the... Reign of the Tremerian family, who basically had the country in slavery. Um, but from his time, he seemed to have a very specific system of trade set up, and now that he's passed, it seems that um, pretty much anyone with anything to trade is now passing through here, and it's essentially a free-for-all. Uh, which you gather is probably why there's an increased um, Guard presence in the town. But yeah, you guys pass these uh, eloquent looking buildings, the temples, um, fancy shops, shops that are selling wines and cheeses. Uh, I like cheese. Fine, finely cut bits of meat. Uh, I like cheese. And it does look like very tasty cheese indeed. How much is the cheese? Uh, do you want to stop in? Yeah. Sure. Um, so you pass this um, storefront. Uh, 
appear to be like large marble pillars outside the front of it. Um, behind those pillars are two windows on either side of the door frame. Uh, those windows just have six shelves each uh, with various sorts of cheese. You notice some of these cheeses to be, um, I suppose, indigenous to uh, fowl. Some of these cheeses from Valkyria. Yes, man! We're gonna have a really inventive name for some cheese. Um, and you enter the shop. Um, it's not as fragrant as you expect in here. Um, taking a look around the shop, you do notice a few talismans and symbols hanging from a ruse and such. Um, which, if anyone would like to make arcana checks, try and figure out what they do. Sure. That's 25. Ooh, nice. Natural 20. You're definitely familiar with these. You have made Wasted some yourself. Uh, you've made some of these yourself. Um, they're used very frequently in the Order of Shaltir. Uh, they're purification um, runes, essentially, um, for cleaning toxins and um, essentially just purifying the air. Um, Hmm. In the Order of Shaltir, they'd probably use them for cleaning toxins and poisons and other wanton magical gaseous effects. But in this shop, it just appears to be used for a rather rudimentary, um, shrewd manner of cleaning the stench of cheese from the air. Um, but as you enter, it's very cool in here. Um, there's a portly woman behind the counter. Um, she's kind of just leaning on it hair tied up in a bun, a hair net over the top. She has smiles at you as you enter. So, uh, uh, does that mean I can... I, I know the, uh, how they, these symbols look like? Is it like... Uh, if you had enough time, you could make one of these birds relatively easily. How much time? A short rest. Is it like... Would it have like wine tasting here as well? Is it like a posh place or is it just cheese? you want to ask her? Yeah, I'll ask her. Um, I'll walk over the desk and I'll say, Hello, um, what kind of... Hello, yeah. oh, hello, what kind of establishment would you say you are? Would you say you serve wines with your cheese? Or are you just a dairy? Well, for the right customer, we can certainly uh, oh. adhere to your needs. Um, what kind of cheeses do you have from Valkyria? Oh, Christine's cheeses offers a whole range of oh. from all oh. over the world. Anything you can imagine, I'm sure we have it. If not, we can certainly procure it. All right. Um, Chen, what kind of cheeses do I have? Uh, looking around the shop, you notice a couple of them. Um, the patrician blue. Oh, wow. A uh, very favoured cheese in the capital. Um, yes. You notice a few um, strange greenish sort of curled cheeses um, with a whitish kind of core. They look almost like, um, almost like a greenish orb with like spikes uh -huh. sticking into a whitish core. Um, which you recognize to be Forian Blanc. Right. Did, did you say you had, what was it, Patrician cheese? Patrician Blue. Right, okay. Um, how much would it be for a slice of the that? Well, Patrician Blue would set you back around... 80 gold? It is important. Yeah. Highest uh, quality, I'll show you. Uh, does food in this game give you stats or is it just food? It's just food. How long, or do I know how long it'll be before it goes out of date? Uh, Patrician Blue only gets tastier with time. Alright, okay. Question. Um, uh, how m we, uh, I still have written down f 13 rations. How many do I still have? But in restaurants, the last time you used them, you probably still have all of them, I believe. 
Oh, well, uh, yeah, cause I don't know why I would have bought new ones, but I don't think I need new ones then. Things with rations, it's, it's enough to get you through, but it's not very filling. Um, do you guys want to stop off here and have some cheeses? Yeah, uh, we, we didn't really eat lunch so far, do we? What, what time is it at the moment? It's not sunset yet, is it? It's between no, 1 and 2, I believe. Yeah, it's getting into the afternoon. All right. Uh, yeah, I'll, I'll, I'll pay. Let's stop um, for lunch. I'm, a, I'm, a, I'm, a, I'm, a, I'm. Yeah. A do you serve? Born. I need, I need. Do you serve uh, bread? Oh well, if you'd like to sample some of the cheeses, I'm sure we could cater to that. Um, could I have some of the patrician blue? Do you have any bread to go with it, or crackers, or anything like that? Uh, yes, we do. Um, and she walks to one of the back shelves and slides it open, and there's an assortment of breads. Um, Ooh. She pulls uh, a tiger type loaf looking off the shelf and begins to slice into it uh, very thinly. Uh, it appears to be very crusty. I do uh, like my cheeses. Do you have Grober cheese? Grober? Uh, yes, we do. Oh, more, hey, more the inventions. First, the first shop ever with something from my region. Um, Chen, I uh, hand over the thirty gold. I mean, eighty gold when she comes back. Um, she places the bread um, on a nice platter, uh, deck like a white large um, platter around a meter long, um, decorated with blues and gold trim. Place it on the table. I'll just um, fetch your cheese. Uh, she takes a gold off the counter, puts it in okay. a till. Uh, she runs towards one of the shelves and begins to package Trishan Blue. Um, it's a large blue um, circle that seems to shine a little bit in the light. Uh, you notice a few whitish gold sparkles in it. She comes back and places it um, on the counter, a nice little tray. Thank you. Is there seats in this place? Is it like a uh, there are a few chairs, yeah. Alright, okay. Uh, can I ask, do I need to feed my familiar, or is it just like a magical essence that doesn't need feeding? It's essentially a face for it. Right. So it doesn't need for it, but it can eat if you want it to. I mean, I'd rather not have that responsibility of needing to feed it. Can we just say it needs feeding every now and again? But it doesn't need to eat, but it can. Alright, okay, never mind then. Yes. Well, I'll take my cheeses and I'll just take a seat on a table that has enough seats for all of us. Uh, yeah, there's one not too far from the counter, which is... She says, I'll, I'll, I'll bring it over to you. Alright, okay, thank she you. She curtsies and picks the tray up and slides onto the table. Pulls out a chair for each of you. Kind of points to it. You get the sense that this is a very formal establishment. Mm -hmm. Yes, that's good. Um, can I interest you in any wine? Um, what kinds do you have? Well, at the moment we only have one in stock. What what I assure you, it is of the finest vintage. What? What kind of? What's its name? The Carillion Red. Right. Okay. Sure. Just um, just a tiny bit since it's not late. I don't really want to be getting drunk too early. And she... Wait, how much is it? Oh, well, it's just a glass, glass on the house. house. Oh, thank you. Okay, that's fine then. She walks back behind the counter towards um, where the shelf with bread is and closes the cupboard after uh, placing the tiger loaf back inside. Um, she opens a cabinet underneath that. Um, as she opens it, a cloud of frost like seeps out of it. Mm -hmm. and she pulls out a very um, fancy-looking bottle. Uh, it's your typical wine bottle shape, but the closer it gets to the top, the more the bottle seems to um, twist. There appears to be like a few sh shards of glass which kind of swirl around to the cork and then kind of like pint. Um, Pincer. Uh, she pulls out a little implement, pops off the cork, pulls a few glasses out from under the counter, and pours each of you a glass of Corellian Red. Places them on a 
silver tray and brings it up to your table. Is there anything else I can do for you today? That's far away, huh? But, um, I'll leave you to enjoy it. Um, if you do want your cheese wrapped and bundled, I can do that for you when you're done. Um, we, sure, I guess. That would be great, thank you. Sorry, what did you say? Pardon? Sorry, I didn't quite catch that last thing. I said sure, yeah, thank you. She kind of bows and curtsies. I bow back. Kind of raises an eyebrow and walks back up to the counter. She just seems to be kind of like cleaning the service, keeping everything looking pristine. What's everyone else doing? So I'm eating my cheeses. I'm also, I'm, I mean, I'm also eating the cheeses? This was a thing for all, right? Yes, it was, yes. Yeah, yeah I'm also eating cheeses. Uh, it's a relatively large wheel, it's around uh, right. Gonna get table ones and cheese. Is this uh, Marduk is uh, Lacto and Tarlan, so he's like just being polite. <laughs> you can still eat cheese when you're lactose intolerant. No, I can't. I can't. Very small quantities. Unless you wanna like, pa like have really bad stomach pains. Yeah, he's being polite and just enjoying the wine. Isn't this cheese just cheesy? You say you take a sip of wine. Uh, uh, yeah. We need, uh, we need to make a constitution statement. No, I'm joking. Um, I was actually going to check if the wine was poisoned. Is the Grober <laughs> cheese as good as I remember? Uh, you the Grober. Actually, Marduk remembers uh, drinking this my, uh, to wine. To people, Patricia, Patricia Blue, she told you that they had Grober. Um, you didn't purchase any of no, I, th I thought we were we're trying out different ones right now. Oh no, uh, I just if bought If you like samples, I'm even ask her. She's just behind the counter. Oh. We're just doing something completely different. We're going for cheese testing. Uh, so Mara, great. As you do taste a wine, um, a very strong alcoholic taste like fills your mouth. Like There's no flavor to it. It's just pure alcohol. And <laughs> as that... That's just like the initial sip. As you like, the glass leaves your mouth. A uh, very fruity, uh, berry-like... Uh, wave ro washes over your mouth um, more quenching than most wine uh, very sweet I turn uh, and say is it nice? oh this is very good wine very good nice keep eating my cheese no, I'm, not, I'm not eating cheese I've uh, chilled man. Blue, cheese. it's very tangy Right. Uh, but the aftertaste is quite refreshing. Mm -hmm. It's almost like Gorgonzola. Oh my god. So are we just chilling eating cheese? <laughs> How long are we gonna chill eat cheese for? Anyone wanna know? Are we eating the whole wheel? Are we taking some home? We can Marla, take them with us. Marduk is not touching the cheese. It's not, you have to eat it like during the day, so I suppose... I could keep some until the end of the day, but I want to eat like the majority of it so I'm not wasting my gold. She kind of pipes up and she's like, um... The cheese, uh, it lasts for a very long time. Um, as long as it's kept in a dry, relatively dry storage area. Um, yes, but you shouldn't rush to eat it. Um, okay. It'll last right. you quite a while. It's very good for dinner parties. Oh, well. I mean, we could bring it when we go to see the puppeteer, maybe. They might like cheese. <laughs> Just here, this cheese can vouch for us. Yeah. The what? Puppeteer. I have no idea who that you is. You know Cillian? That's his nickname. We're not supposed you to really say You really didn't pay attention to me. 
We're not supposed uh, to say his name in public. I was not here. Was oh, this yeah. session. There was oh, this session. Oh, it was before this session? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> at the beginning. I wanted to call him Mark. I wanted to call him Tooth. <laughs> I'm sorry, Papa Terry, yeah, sure. Or Smile. Uh, uh, fine, um... I'm sorry, I, I wasn't paying attention. So, we can stay in here for about like an hour, maybe. Just chilling, eating some cheese. Alright. I guess this would constitute as a short rest if you... If yeah, you know, I was thinking one. that. So, if you, if Mordok wants to do the studying of the language, you could do that here, couldn't he? Well, there aren't any books in here, there's just tables and cheese. Oh, I thought it was about the sign, you saw a sign or something when he came in. Uh, uh, he saw the, um... Marduk takes out his uh, scroll book and starts... Um, oh, hell yeah. Good rest, good rest. Start uh, writing down in it. I, as soon as this rest is over, I'm gonna go check the temple again. Cheese is immaculate, Toriel. <laughs> Cheese is um, great, isn't it? It's good to bring I do like the cheese. Over a sample of Broba. Oh. Uh, do you want to tell us what that tastes like? Very, very it's very heavy cheese. It smells a little, yeah, little, a little milky. A very I mean, strong aftertaste yeah. that lingers in your mouth for five to ten minutes. Something like that. Cool. You guys sit there enjoying your cheese. We do. Idle chatter. Remember that time I saw that orc's penis? Ha ha ha! Wait, what? <laughs> what? what? <laughs> why can I? Uh, why am I the only one who ever remembers? You say that, and uh, the lady on the counter, who by this point you probably gathered is Christine. Um, Spit a banner. She, she got, she's kind of taken aback by like the mention of a penis in her <laughs> fine <laughs> cheese establishment. Oh my. She kind of just like buckles down and frantically starts cleaning things. <laughs> I guess she doesn't get much action. It was that time we were in the forest, remember? We were fighting the orcs. The giant. Oh, yeah. Yep. I will always remember. Uh, you, you did not tell us you were. Uh, I did. I constantly went. say it. You mean where I used my fire sword for the first time? I was in the forest with the two giants when my owl just died. Yeah, and yeah. You saw, <laughs> you saw the one <laughs> fell over. I do not remember that. <laughs> it was, Chen was like, you see. Yeah. Much banter, man. Anyway, I, I'll go to back to temple one more time. Yeah, as, as you guys are finishing up in the cheese shop and begin to, you know, pick up your stuff, um, be set down to kind of relax, uh, Christine wraps your cheeses. I say thank you very much. In a nice little spotted bundle. She. Oh yeah. She smiles and nods towards you. So Tiffany, if you want to add, uh, cheese. Three quarters. Patricia Blue. Yeah, man, cheese. Uh, but yeah, she hands you your package, she wants to uh, nice. return to attending the shop. Um, the door swings open and it walks this very small elfin girl, very pale skin, uh, looking to be around tw between the ages of 6 and 10, ambiguous, uh, long golden hair, black cloak with feathers dyed around the edges. Uh, you notice this to be um, Lele's human form. 
Mm-hmm. Uh, shortly behind the uh, very um, near side of Evelyn. Yeah. Guess we'll have to approach her. Um, I think we don't she, have to. She sees you guys like standing up. She's like, "Oh, I see you find found the finer side of town." Yeah, man. Reminds me of home. All this cheese. I'm sure it does. Um, how are you guys finding Yanwei? Um, it has its, its good sides. A lot of a them, lot actually. Of... I'm sure. Um, you can get almost anything you need here. It's like a mixture of like two different cultures. Because you've got like the stalls, which is like a flea market. But over here, it's like... the Maybe the better... The better half of town, maybe. Oh, I'd say more than three, my dear. Have you not been to the Colossal side? Not yet. No, we're going to the library, actually. It's very industrial. The library. We did into we did have a run in with Cillian earlier. Oh yeah. And he said we have to have someone vouch for us at the meeting later. Did he now? Yes. Well. Can you do that for us? Maybe you ask the question. Would what? you please vouch for us? Mm. She kind of like swings her head backwards and smiles and looks over her shoulder. I mean, I could. Oh, babe. Come on, babe, I've got cheese. <laughs> what kind? You can have some of Patricia Blue. You got Patricia Blue? Yeah, man. I'm bring- well, I'm hopefully bringing- Christine, some you blue. told me you were out! <laughs> <laughs> yeah, well, uh, Tiffany here bought the whole, uh, wheel. Yeah, I was gonna have it tonight at least. There was a whole wheel? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> we were gonna have it Adeline, Adeline kind of looks towards the back and the, the woman kind of, like, um, ducks under the counter and begins to, like, <laughs> rustle with, like, various things. <laughs> Like when I was at Dickinson's, they were like, we have no more pies left, and the cheeky bitch went behind the counter and ate the last pie. So I don't like Dickinson's. Uh, I'll tell you what, you give me half of what you got left of the Patricia Blue, and I'll vouch for you. Yeah, sure. I mean, Chen, you'll have to work that out because I'm not good at maths. Uh, I'll give you tonight when we go, just to make sure. Very well. Uh, just, just put it as like a third. You got a third left. Okay. Unless she wants it now, we can trust her though. Oh, of course, you can trust me. She smiles. This is I, cheese we're talking about. This I is very important. Brown and hazel. Alrighty, okay, okay. Well, Adeline been honest with us so far. Yes, that is true. That's the best That's deal the best we ever deal. got from Adeline. Have some cheese. They were all sorted. She Man. Tutorial. All of our deals have been beneficial, haven't they, for both parties? Well, most of them got us into a hell of a lot of trouble. And this one cost us some cheese. Well, no one told you to... And she looks towards Christine, and she kind of leans into you. No one told you to go crazy in the mansion. Well... I, I, you knew about that. I specifically told you to be discreet, in fact. We were as discreet as we could. But I mean, I was. Not naming names, but someone fucked up. I gathered that. <laughs> Either way, you guys shouldn't go back to um, Siosa anytime soon. I'm not on it. Well, the good news is that whatever his name faces never saw my face. I hope. Um, yeah, which is, you're the errand boy now when we have to get something from Siosa. Uh, well, you I'm say that, good. but the four of you are on one posters already. That's oh, fine. What? I just make what? myself look like somebody else. What? So what? How, how am I on the wanted poster? You never saw me. Other people are unfounded. You were sleeping on a fountain for like three days. Ah. Uh, <laughs> how much are we worth? Turn myself and. She turns towards you. Um. 
I've seen better. Ah. <laughs> we'll work on it. I'm sure you will. Yeah, you know, I was in prison, so... Huh? I'm not surprised. Christine kind of stands up from behind the counter and she's like, Um... You were leaving, weren't you? Yes. 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 Um... I don't mean to be rude, but I'd, I'd, I'd rather not be associated with um, ruffians and the sword. I'm not a ruffian, honey. I come here to eat cheese. We'll be on our way then, thank you. Uh, yes, um, goodbye. Goodbye. <laughs> I like I like Christine. <laughs> I should have made her some kind of like cheese pun name. The shop is called Christine's Cheeses. Wow. Chris Cheeses. Jesus Christ! <laughs> anyway, as, as you guys <laughs> enter onto the street, reasonably forcibly by Christine, uh, Adeline behind you, holding Laylee's hand. Um, so, there's still a few hours left. Any plans? I'll check the temple again. I have to meet with some people there. To the library! No, oh, friends in high places, do we? Um, I, ha I have not had my talk with Adeline yet, by the way. I don't want to be all serious, but I, I have no idea what to do now. Um, we'll do that after this session, if you're cool with that clips. Alright. Well, I still have a few errands to attend to before sundown. Um, I'll vouch for you as long as you bring the cheese. I'll bring the cheese. Very good. I guess I'll see you later then. Bye bye. And Till later. She walks, she walks across the street and um, into another shop which appears to sell um, fabrics and other fine silks and levers and such. Hmm. And I'll be back in a, in a second. So you guys go, you guys are going to the temple or the library? Because to go to the temple you'd have to go back because you're already past it. Do we have time to um, uh, did the um, uh, tutorial need? Um, if you were going to go to the temple and then to the library and you went to research the Dwarven Mountains. Mm -hmm. um, that would probably be all of your time before the meeting. Why don't you go ahead to the library without me and I'll see you there later. Alright. Okay, so um, Garth, Toriel, not Toriel, sorry, Garth, Tiffany and uh, Murdoch make a way up towards the library. Young man, young man. Toriel makes her way back towards the Temple of Bahamut. Um, the two paladins that were outside standing by the horn are, are gone now. The horn is still lit up outside, however, it appears to be chained to a wall now. Um, entering, uh, you pressed up the stairs, end of the door. Um, there is no one inside, apart from two individuals standing t towards the hole, conversing with each other. Um, one of them appears to be uh, a very s tanky looking paladin, um, full plate mail, um, almost emanating its own light, uh, a large great sword on his back. Uh, no momento, no momento, please. Uh, half elf, silver hair, flowing. Um, you notice this to be yeah, Avion, yeah. and he's conversing with um, a very strange-looking individual who is wearing um, long blue robes. Um, with 
silver lapels over the top, which appear to float in the wind, almost weightless. Um, symbol of Bahamut emblazoned across the bluish parts of his robe. Um, you see a reddish dragonborn, um, and as they both kind of turn to acknowledge you enter, you notice that the other half of his body appears to be human. Hmm. So there's three. This do the the guy in the ropes is half dragonborn, half human. That's interesting. Quite literally, yes. I mean, aren't dragonborn per definition half human? <laughs> but he's even more human. He is literally half human, half dragonborn. Oh, okay, Down cool. Uh, I'll approach them with a pretty big smile. Hello there. If you don't test what you he smile across his face. Hark there, Toriel. You're looking a little worse for wear. How have you been? I've been well. Uh, getting, getting swept up in the troubles of the land, as you probably expected. Um, not quite this much, though. <laughs> Keeping yourself busy? Yes, we're meeting later to solve the problems of the, the lands, hopefully. Or a oh, step there. I'm glad to see my protege growing up to be an outstanding paladin. Um, this is the one I was telling you about, Varys. And the um, guy in the priestess robes kind of turns towards you and he politely bows. Yeah, uh, yes. Um, I've heard much about you, Toriel. If all what Avion says is true, um, I suppose this is an honor to meet you. You wouldn't happen to be the high priest here, would you? Uh, a high priest um, is a term I'm not very fond of. Simply call me brother. Then it is an honor to meet you, brother. I I take a mark. I suppose you yeah you can do anything with this because I was supposed to show this a person in this clergy in this his time. eyes kind of widen um, as you show him the symbol and he looks back towards Avion who kind of gives him a concerned look um, I suppose you've spoken with the platinum one yes what exactly did he tell you he told me to seek out the clergy in uh, Yon Way and that you're or I am supposed to help you by to secure one of his boons. I suppose that overlaps from what I was told in my vision. However, I was given a task for you to complete. Upon completion of the task, you shall receive the boon. Well, however... However? He turns towards Avion, Avion kind of shakes his head. Um, I'll, I'll let Avion be the one to explain. Uh, Avion kind of walks towards you and he sits in one of the benches to the side. Uh, Take a seat, Toriel. I take a seat. Now, I'm not one to question the word of Bahamut. However, I must make sure that you are ready before you undertake this task. Failure will mean death. Okay. However, if you do manage to succeed, you shall become an instrument of it. An instrument of death? The instrument of him. Of Bahamut. Bahamut's will on this plane, if you have phrased it so. Well, what is this task that you do not feel I'm ready for? I'll come back, Tiffany. Well, it's not necessarily that I 
don't feel you're ready. I wouldn't have sent you here if I didn't believe you were so. Um, it's more that I want you to understand the ramifications. Then explain them to me. He looks back towards Brother Varys. Uh, Varys nods towards him. Um, turns back. I'm here because I also received a vision from the Platinum One. There is a great amount of evil gathering in this land. Specifically here, in Yanwe. Hmm. Instruments of those fallen from grace. It wasn't Wounds, me. If you will. You're not even there, shut up. Um, seem to be being amassed in one place. I have no understanding of why. I don't know what, what this means. All I know is that such a collection of evil is, is no good to it. Yes. If, if if Bahamut says Tiamat is the least of our worries, I gathered as much. From what I was told, the influences of many, not just Tiamat, are being drawn upon this planet. To mention a few, Lolith, the Spider Queen, Even Asmodeus himself. Now, I'm not sure what form their boons take, but from what I understand, powerful magical artifacts. We alone are not enough to destroy them. We are but mortals. Which is why I suppose he needs you. He kind of gazes off for a second. He makes a lot of dramatic pauses. <laughs> you get the sense that even though this guy who you had been traveling with prior um, accomplished many things, battled great evils, um, defeated great cataclysms. Uh, for something to be this troubling to even him uh, means that you know you you did him good real shit. Here. As you know, Dark's Fall draws near. And I suppose you are to be ready before the Black Stride. I know these things mean no sense to you, I'll explain them in a moment. Okay. <laughs> Thanks. Um, Are you here for long, Toriel? In Yangwe? Well, I'll at least stay till the morning. After that, we're not sure where it takes us yet. I'll meet you on the plains to the south, and I suppose there, and he looks back towards Varys, Varys nods. I suppose there I will explain your task lies before you. However, for now, I suggest you continue with... Don't let it trouble you too much. When will we meet? In the morning? At daybreak, yes. Okay. The southern side of town. I shall wait for you outside the gates. I will be there. He kind of bows in his seat towards me.
So, it has been a while. That it has. Let's, let's put all the um, dramatics to one side for a moment. Who have you been um, traveling with? Ah, Anything I've interesting? been... It's a lovely bunch. This old... human... This old man! <laughs> it's an old man. <laughs> uh, old mercenary that came here in seek of a treasure, but was severely disappointed and he's traveling with us for... Well, I guess still unknown reasons. He, I guess he just needs friends. I've also been traveling with a with a local, and with with this half with this uh, elf, but uh, that he hidden he wasn't around very long. But we've also I've also been traveling. Was that was that the bard? Yeah, was the, the bard, <laughs> the weird bard medieval. That we left in the middle of nowhere. But I've also been traveling with the with the the queen of Valkyria, Tiffany herself. Yeah, myself. The queen. Yeah. Torium, I told you better than to lie. <laughs> <laughs> oh, surely I wouldn't lie to you. He's got he's got taken aback. He's like, the queen. Yes. Yes. She's been here coming here. Yes, she's been coming here to research and on how to become a better queen, I I believe. Well, if those in power seek knowledge on how to improve themselves, they can't be all bad. Yeah! Tiffany, you're not there. Shh. No, no, Tiffany just had a feeling of righteousness in her body. I believe she re she regards me as a good friend, even now. Oh, not nice. And I must admit, she, everyone in this, this group has already grown dear to me. Oh, I'm stroking your hand. You're, You're not there, there Tiffany. <laughs> if I was there with you, I'd be stroking your hand. Okay. Well, I'm glad you finally found some true friends, Toriel. Yeah, I suppose it's been about time. I suppose I shouldn't keep you from them. Uh, we will speak in the morning. I won't run off before seeing you. But I myself have my own quest set up by the Platinum One, which I must complete. I will leave you to it. I kinda... He's smaller than me, right? Slightly. Like, the armor he wears bulks him up quite a bit. I go... I, I hug him and say, it's been nice meeting you again. Yeah. Hugs you back with like the tightest embrace, kind of like a father who's seeing their child after um, a few long years. I'll be seeing you. Muhammad Strep with you, Toriel. And with you, I'll be seeing you in the morning. In the morning, then. I guess I'll run off to the library. And you leave, and he stands there, and we are watching you walk away. Meanwhile, in an alternate universe, no, uh, <laughs> Tiffany and Murdoch, you guys make your way around the outsides of um, Yanwei. Uh, so it's kind of cooler as you get towards the sides of the walls um, over the lake. Uh, you begin to notice like a river. While it seems natural, it is definitely carved to look natural as you can see the longest path um, across a bridge um, towards where um, the library, which um, resembles the exterior of the one you found in Rest. Right, okay. Uh, as you approach, you notice a number of Shalterian, Shout a number of the order um, standing outside. Uh, oh. kind of standing guard here and there. Uh, they kind of watch you closely, but they don't seem to be obstructing your path as you pass by. Uh, mm -hmm. There are two they doors. Don't obstruct our path? They don't obstruct your path. They just kind of look at you as you walk past very closely. Yeah, the one to the left is the library, isn't it? We're, we're faced with two doors. This is a great challenge. <laughs> this we is the final boss. boss. Yeah, a door. No, but um, the one to your left has the symbol of shout over the top. The one to your right has the symbol of the library. 
Yeah, then the right one. How are we gonna open this door? It's the right one. one. So yeah, a familiar set of doors you push on these very large, heavy, wood encrusted doors. Are you doors sure about that? Because then they swing open effortlessly. Effortlessly. As if you were allowed in. No, no. Uh, um... Ah... Uh, there's a crystal. One moment, I'm just tracking you guys in. Ah. Notes. Yeah, so, um, similar, very large, expansive room, uh, relatively empty, with a faint bluish gem on the back wall. As you guys enter, the door seems to slowly shut behind you. Mm -hmm. What's going on? What are you doing? Uh, what can we see inside? It's a very dark room with that. Yeah, but Chen, blue I have gem. night vision. I can see in the dark. Yeah, and what you see is a very big, large, empty room with a faint blue gem right. on the back wall. Is, isn't this supposed to be the library? Yeah, yeah, I'll just walk to the gem and begin the Isn't ritual. this supposed to be the library, Chen? And uh, it is indeed. And as Murdoch like, walks to the blue gem and places his hand upon it, he begins to focus and he disappears from sight. Oh, yeah, 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 I remember this. I remember that, right? So, can I walk over and do the same thing? You do, and your vision begins to flicker as if everything around you is made of strings, which right. have been pulled in opposite directions. And as these strings once again begin to come into focus, um, mm -hmm. you're standing in a very familiar library uh, with a high elf. Towards your back, behind the. Uh, is it the master of books? It is the master of books. Ah, old friend, I remember your name. So I'm good like that. He looks at you. Oh, it's oh, you again. It is I, the Frenchest fry. The what now? <laughs> Wait, is it is it the same library? Yeah. It appears to be the same library. Oh, there's only one library in the world. It's here. the master of books. Uh, yeah. You know, being a scholar, I should be able to know this. <laughs> what's the Master of Books name, Tiffany? The Master of Books. Yeah, but what's his name, Tiffany? The Master uh, of Books. That's his is name. No way. Yeah. Okay. Is that is uh, does Mar is Marlock familiar with this guy? Should Been here before. Probably should be right. Uh, studying books. Um. Yeah. You. You'd be. Vaguely familiar with him. Um, the, from what you know, from where your rank, roll, roll me a history check, actually. All right. Just, just see how much you remember, because it was a bit a while ago. That's twenty. Natural twenty. No, 17 plus 3. Okay. So, um, you got to the rank of around Initiate Disciple, which is very early in the rankings of um, the Order. Um, as an Initiate, you didn't really much leave the halls of Schalt themselves. And most of your study material was brought to you or presented to you in classes. Um, occasionally, you might be asked to make a trip to the library, but um, it would have been very brief, just re either return something or pick up something that was arranged for pick-up. I feel like I lost that role. So, yeah, okay, um, I, uh, I don't know uh, if he's, uh, like, um... We're not... Uh, like how to not offend them or what, whatever. Uh, from what you know and what you've heard around the halls, everything offends this guy. He's just a dick. You don't remember him. He didn't like you. Do you not remember? Yeah, because you're a you're a filthy. You're, you're filthy. Shut up! Shut up! Uh, you person out of here. You are just a filthy. Guys, seriously, stop it. No, no, I was just taking what Luke says. 
Lucas is not in the storm. What? Um, fine. Um, do I remember his name? Uh, you do. It's Hirian. Hirian. Yes. To write it down, Bookmaster. Hirian. Hirian. He's a high elf. Very long, elongated features. Um, very pissy looking face. Uh, pissy wears... looking face? Yeah, he's pissy. Yeah. Br British slang. So, um, he, he looks kind of angry. Tiffany, and don't say long... anything yet, okay? Just give me a second, because I walked in first. And, uh... Yeah, he's wearing the Order of Chartier robes with no hood. Um, the bluish, immaculate material with the golden trim. The elaborate design on the side of it and the symbol emblazoned across where his heart would be. Tyrion? Tyrion. How do you spell that? H Y R I A N. Oh my god, the H first name I could instantly spell that Chen give me. Boom! That's a good name. Th thank you for... Yeah, well, how did you spell it again? H-Y-R? I-A-N. Kyrian, the master of books. Yeah, a dick. Uh, Kyrian, always a pleasure. Uh, I would like to research some lore, please. Oh, so you've actually come to learn something this time. That's new. Yeah, uh, about dwarf and civilization and lore. Any Wars. specific era? Hmm, 200 years ago. 300. Well, which is it? 200 or 300? Uh, Chen, what what was the third third era of the of the Tamaria? I forgot the name. The third. I'm sorry. What? What was it? What was the question? You told me about the. Um, well, yeah, you know what? Three hundred years ago, between three hundred and four hundred years ago. Give me all you have on that. It's probably he, ro he, he rolls his eyes and yeah. um, he walks out from behind. Um, as he does, he almost as if his body is like being pressed flat. He just kind of disappears as he walks. Um, you kind of begin to look around. You notice on one of the upper rungs, he's just kind of walking around, um, perusing, like running his finger along the spines of some of the books as he stops. And the bookshelf entirely shifts, like all of the colors of the spines that you can make out from where you are just seem to change places and colors and sizes and thickness and such. Um, and he begins to pull out around eight books. And then he walks behind the shelf and reappears in front of you and plops them down on the desk. 300 to 400 years ago. Thank you. Well, I'll just take the books and uh, sit somewhere and start to read them in a specific order. Okay. Um, Tiffany, you would have entered around the time that he was disappearing. Okay. So I kind of see the master of books kind uh, You don't. You see him reappear with a, a, a stack of books in his hands as he puts them on the desk. <laughs> He kind of watches Murdoch as he picks them up off the table and just walks over to one of the tables. And it's just a very intent gaze on Murdoch. And then he, as Murdoch passes you, his eyes seem to just kind of stop and just focus on you. Hello. Oh. Hello. I remember you. Do you remember me? Yes, I do. What do you want? Um... To be honest, I'm not quite sure. I just tend to be drawn towards libraries. I guess I probably could read some books 
the light. And maybe some more about alchemy, maybe some more about the spider queen Lolith. If you have anything on her. How do you know that? For the first time. Pardon? You, for the first time, you see his expression change. And he raises oh. his eyebrow. No, but I actually want to know, why would Tiffany ask about Lolith? Who knows? Oh, who knows? So, is he upset, or...? No, he looks... intrigued. Right, okay. So, I just heard some people talking about her on the street on the way over here, and I was like... Hmm... They would think she was quite... scary. You know, part of my job is to know when people are lying. Mm -hmm. uh, Marduk just picks an eye, uh, picks his head through the book he's reading, and then just picks it back down. I wouldn't be lying though, because I did hear someone talking about it. Yeah, someone that was on the other side of the town. Shut up, Luke. You don't know what I'm talking about. <laughs> I'm sure you did. We don't have many books on the Dark Soldering. I used to see um, I heard you talking about it. However, I suppose we may have a few tones mm -hmm. that mention Lolith. Do you reckon I could have a read of them, please? You may, and his face returns to that kind of pissy... pissy um, he, he doesn't disappear this time, he walks to one of the bookshelves that are kind of like adjacent to the desk. Um, mm -hmm. In a similar manner, he runs his fingers down the spine, and this time the bookshelf doesn't shift, and pulls out uh, two uh, very old-looking um, bits of the leather bounding of these pages are falling off. Shen, um, by, by the way, I'm looking for... Uh... For specific uh, on the um, the dwarfs that lives uh, uh, the dwarfs uh, that lived on the mountain or inside it. Cool, yeah. Um If you go ahead and roll me an investigation, not an investigation, sorry, just an intelligence, straight intelligence. Okay, one second. Um, he brings those books over to you, Tiffany. He's like, mm -hmm. this one is more focused on the fall of. The Dark Souls ring from Grace and their formation. And he slides okay. the, the, the oldest looking one over to you. I mean, he places an up on the top. This one is focused more on the drow and their worship of right. the Spider Queen. Can I take both of them? You may. Uh, so yeah, uh, Tiffany walks down to a separate table from Marduk. Uh, why is my intelligence so low? Uh, Tiffany, if you want to go ahead and roll me a intelligence check as well. It's 13. For me. 13? Okay, I'll keep that in mind. I'm also proficient in intelligence. I don't, I don't think anyone's proficient in the base stat. It says I'm proficient in it. Saving, not not a saving throw, just. Oh, uh, okay, yeah. Well, I got sixteen. Sixteen. Okay. Uh, Murdoch. Yeah. Uh, you find references to various dwarven heroes. Um, mentions of great battles against um, the dwarves and the Durgar. Uh, the Durgar being a type of um, evil dwarf um, who lives solely underground, more specifically in the Underdark. Um, they tend to have a greyish hue to their skin, um, many of them are blind. Um, they have a very spe specific um, like hierarchy. Uh, they usually worship a king, um, or the most powerful amongst them. Um, and they tend not to get on well with 
any other creatures. Mm. Um, you read various. You read various. Um, sorry, the word escapes me. Um, encounters between. Uh, Old dwarven kings, old dwarven warriors, um, knights, protectors, if you will, um, who battled these Jurga um, in order to prevent them from taking over the upper dwarven society. Um, you hear references to the Dark Stride, the Black Stride, sorry. Um, and Dark's Fall, and how in these times um, the Durgar often gain power from worshipping the Shadow Guardians. Um, and there is description of a great battle around 360 years ago, uh, which speaks of uh, how the great hero Olgar um, defeated the Durgar using um, an item he had crafted for him by a brass dragon um, which would nullify all evil magics within a specific area. Um, using this uh, to his advantage, he managed sorry, to... Sorry, what, what uh, what, what's the name of the, 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 the dragon? It was a brass dragon. There isn't a specific mention to the dragon's name in this book. Uh, further reading, um, you find that uh, Olga Stormbrand. Uh, you find that uh, using this magical artifact that nullified magic. Um, he managed to uh, basically destroy um, the legions of the Durga as they fought through, um, making their way to the king's stronghold and such. It was and, Orga uh, himself again? Orga Stormbrand. Um, not solo, he had a company with him. Um, but he's the only one who's mentioned by name. Stormbrand? Stormbrand. Brand. Stormbrand, yes. S T O R M B R A N D. Olga spelled U L G A R. Um, but yeah, it's basically how he used the nullifying properties of this magical artifact to uh, eradicate the influence of the Shadow Guardians that these Durgar had acquired. Um, and essentially force them back underground and seal them there. Uh, however, Olgar was never seen after that grand battle. Uh, the, he uh, sealed away the Durgar. Durgar, right? yes. Durgar. How, how do you spell that? Uh, ba -ba 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 -ba. D-U-E-R-G-A-R Durga, okay. He sealed them underground using this item? Uh, using the item to assist him in defeating the magics bestowed upon them by the um, Shadow Guardians. Uh, these names are coming up a lot, so I'm going to tell you guys what these are. Basically, they're the months of the years on this um, world. So there are seven months. Each month has ten days in a week. Forty days a month. So each month, four weeks, ten days long. Uh, seven months. months. Seven months. Uh, you've got uh, Dion, which in is a year. year. Seven months in a year, yes. In this world. In this world. 
What months do they not have? Um, they have... 60 days for a month? No, 10 days a week, 40 days a month. Hmm. 10 days a week, 4 weeks. Oh. So, not 7 days, okay. What's the name of the other... three days that we don't know? So, the month... What's the name of the week? You have Dion, which is the start of the year. Spelt like so. Can you just list them all? Yeah, I will. I'm putting them in the chat on the website. I'll put, actually, I'll put them in the resources. That'd be great. If you can tell us also uh, um, the uh, the days and uh, the name of the days and the uh, name. Yeah, just for uh, how, how much. Like the whole calendar, please. Yeah, How much? Please. Uh, Just yeah, put so the calendar there. The, the days of the month are literally 1st, 2nd, 3rd, 4th, 5th, 6th, 7th, 8th, 20th, 21st, 28th, all no, the way up to 40th. That's so obvious. But yeah, so it'd be the a... 40th of Dion. Dion? He defeated them at the 40th of Dion? No, he. Um, Defeated them during Dark Stride. Black Stride, sorry, I keep calling oh, it Dark Stride. So much lore. Uh, you have Kresly. You have Litinsky. Or Litinsk. You have Natrand. You have frost cover. You have dark's fall. And you have black stride. Okay. They're all 40 days, right? All 40 days. So essentially you have, to put it in simpler terms, uh, one year, this, uh, one week, there's also weeks. And one day does still have 24 hours? Day still has 24 hours, or roughly around that. And one week is how many? 10. 10. 10 days. Yeah, so to simplify it, you've got the year's start, spring, summer, harvest, winter, long night, and then bl the black stride. Uh, you guys would know just from living here that. The Black Stride is a time in which very powerful beings called the Shadow Guardians um, walk the land and they're essentially demigods. Right. But they're not complete demigods. They're kind of like... Um, it's hard to say specifically what they are. Uh, from, know? From, from your understanding, um, none of you would have ever seen one, but you would have heard tales of... So they just wander around, and that's it? Uh, they bestow powers on people, they do evil deeds. Uh, these are just stories that you've heard, but um, don't take me saying this as like, this is what these guys do, so this, this is just This is just the heard. Tremuran time? Uh, the entire planet. In which Tremere falls. Well, I'm pretty sure we've lived through a bunch of black strides then, and we'd know. You would know stories, you'd never see any of them yourself. But, like I said, the only stories that you've heard. Uh, Chen, we did talk about fiends and, uh, like, light beans. Are, are, are they, like, kind of uh, that? 
that uh, Shadow uh, Shadow Guardians are they things the, that from what you've heard? Romy history. What? Romy, Romy history. Uh, no, from what you told me, are they like the uh, uh, like a fin level uh, creatures that we talked about in my backstory? You have no idea. I don't know. Okay, I'll roll history then. For um, it's hard to I, say I because heard. stories, like people who allegedly meet the uh, shadow guardians, either don't live to tell the tales or aren't very forthcoming with what transpired between them. So the stories are very um, the things you tell at night to scare your kids and you know, someone in the back of a tavern might be telling you the story one time. Um, it's just kind of like hearsay here and there. What'd you roll? History. Yeah, 14. 14. Uh, yeah, so... You've heard, like, some people call them gods. You've heard some people call them devils. Uh, you've heard some people call them fiends. You've heard some people call them shadows. Um, but the one thing that all of these things seem to have in common is that they are very powerful. Other than that, it's hard to say specifically, like, what they are. Just the fact that no one has, like, recorded one or knows specifically. I would say you guys would have found, actually, um, just from your initial walking around, you would have noticed the... What's the name of it? The temple. The Shadow Spire, um, which is a temple to the Shadow Guardians within Yanwe. Or on the outskirts of Yanwe. Yeah, the Shadow Jeets. Mm -hmm. Kinda like that. That's how I imagine them, kind of. Yeah, go on again. I'm still here. The long night and the black stride, there are no daylight in those times. Chen, anything else? Because you cut yourself uh, in the middle. Uh, no, that's pretty much about it. There's um, no darkness in, I mean, there's no light in the long night and the black stride. They kind of fade into one thing. No, I mean the history about uh, Uger. Durigar. No, not the, the yeah, Durigar and uh, Yugar. Um, from what you managed to glean from his book, not much else. Like you're specifically focusing on things about this dwarven hero, mm -hmm. and from those eight books that he's given you, you've kind of skimmed over a few of them, and you've picked out like various bits of information surrounding his name. And his deeds, but sp specifically what he is, there isn't too much on these books on him. They're more like chronicles of dwarven lore as opposed to the history of this guy. Is there anything that indicates that he was a paladin? That's very important. Uh, nothing whatsoever. Okay. The past seconds. But uh, 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 to whatever class he was, is there like... Um... Uh, you get the sense that he was very strong and that he used melee weapons, usually two-handed. As for a class, not really. Some type of melee class work.
at this point, I'd say from these guys reading their books, um, Toriel, you would have arrived at the library around this time. Okay, I go in. And it's relatively easy, like you remember how to use the crystals in the library and you shift in and you see Tiffany sitting at the table to your left, Morlock sitting at the table to your right, both engrossed in books and uh, Hirian, the master of books, is kind of just standing a tent behind his desk, looking you square in the eye as you enter. Oh, and another one comes. And another one. Yes, hello. He kind of ignores you. Do you have any books on the great evils of the land, like Tiamat, Asmodeus, or Lolith, or anything like that? He rolls his eyes, like, longer than anyone should. Which one specifically? Um, I guess we can start with Tiamat. He, he leans in a little bit. Don't you have a temple for these kind of things? Fine, how about Ar Asmodeus? Rolls his eyes again. He walks out and he disappears. As he exits, the um, stand kind of apparates into nothingness. Um, you hear a rifle on the shelf behind you, and you turn, and he's standing pretty much next to you. He pulls out another dusty tome and slams it in your hand. Anything else? Not not at the moment. Very well. And he goes back behind his desk. Well, I start reading, I guess. How long do I reckon I'll have to be reading? Before um, I find out anything in, like useful. Ten. Ten. Oh no. Five. This mic is muted. Okay. Yeah, yeah, it's okay. Yeah, so um, you get pretty deep into your book, you find some pretty interesting facts yes. here and there. Uh, Lolith, the great spider queen, um, okay. was once um, part of the initial Seldarine, um wife of the leader of the Seldarine, in fact, mm -hmm. um, before she plotted to kill him and essentially usurp his power. Mm -hmm. um, she always favoured the Drow over um, all types of elves. Mm -hmm. um, after her fall from grace, she and many of the others who fell with her have established um, their own pantheon, the Dark Seldarine, mm -hmm. and began to essentially plot against the initial Seldarine, which led to a, a war. Um, the Dark Seldarine lost, and of the remaining Seldarine, Lolith killed the rest and essentially yeah. took Seldarine for herself. The Dark Seldarine for herself, I should say. Mm -hmm. Yeah, um, what'd you roll for your intelligence, story? Not very high. Uh, well, Eclipse, if you take those pictures, you're gonna wouldn't be looking for um, Driders. The what? Sorry? Driders. D R I D E R. Drider. A straight up intelligence check, Jen? That'd yeah, be 16. Not, not saved, just mm -hmm. check. Um, cool uh, uh, Driders uh, are the ones. Um... Humanoid bodies, upper bodies, spider, lower bodies. You mean the picture? Yeah, I'm, I'm just saying that um, 
don't uh I'll don't she looks yourself into thinking Lolith is primarily humanoid. In no, world, at least. She's not, but I was thinking like uh, kind of a, like the Zerg queen. But oh, more Zerg like Oh okay. That character um, can actually turn into a spider. Uh, Dryder, so did you type it down? Sotorial. Um, the books you read, you, you find Asmodeus is essentially the ruler of the Nine Hells. Um, essentially, despite his immense evil, um, it was that of the lawful evil, and his tenants even drew the respect of some of the greater deities, the greater gods. Um, he is very calm and collected, um, scheming, very smart. Uh, he essentially sees his entire domain as a tool, if you will. Um, cults to Asmodeus are larger than other evil deities, but are still very few and far between. Um, people who follow him believe that they'll gain, gain um, great power and influence uh, through knowledge and tyranny, essentially. Um, he often appears as a tiefling um, with pinkish skin, wearing primarily red robes. Not much else. You kind of jumps out at you. There's nothing. The is there nothing written about what ungodly magic could bring him or the nine entire nine hells back to our plane? Roll me a religion check. Don't even have to. All right, it's the second time ever, and I still I I bet you I have a minus in religion. Yep. And we fought it really f was really funny last time. Well, at least you did. Nine. Um, from your knowledge of the gods' battle with the um, evil deities, they essentially um, tore each other apart. And the remaining ones, or the ones that were injured, the surviving deities, both evil and good, um, were sealed on the opposite side of uh, the planes of existence, to be exact, by a divine shield type uh, entity that the name escapes you at the moment. Um, the primary purpose of that was to stop the gods from, you know, just traversing over to the material plane in which you reside and just doing whatever they want and going back, and the same with the more evil deities, but also to keep the evil deities separate from the good deities. Um, the rest of it's kind of fuzzy at the moment as you're kind of absorbed with this knowledge of Asmodeus and your memory is just a little hazy. Okay. So as you guys conclude your time in the library, gathering a decent amount of knowledge. What kind of um? What time is it? Uh, there are no lights in here, so you have no idea. There's mage lights. Okay. Let's, can we leave then? Yeah. Let's go out. Grab my hammer. Get to the this. The appointment.
Chen were leaving, by the way, by touching the crystal leave like last time. And you do. And as each of you go, you kind of hear a. <sighs> as, um. Hirian begins to make a few signs with his fingers, and the books you guys left on the tables all fall. Oh, sorry. And find their way back to various shelves and their own places. As always, it's been a pleasure. Of course. As you all kind of blink out of existence and that familiar tearing of reality as you find yourselves back in this darkened chamber. Um, you push the doors and you open out and you see the sun is beginning to crest over the sky. It's turning a orangish purplish hue in the distance. Right. We should probably go back to the Chan, Will I grab my hammer first? I'm sorry, oh, uh, uh, Chen, can I ask you something? Yep. Uh, the first um, the, the, the first picture I took, if I took the body of that uh, humanoid uh, spider and put it on the on the spider to the right, will that be like uh, kind of like um, the dread? One you the last one you posted is a dryer. Yes, yeah, so foot shot foot shot foot soldiers for Lolith. Yeah, so take the one before that, remove the legs and take the spider. That would most likely be something that most likely be something resembling Lolith. Oh Or I suppose that's what you get in pictures of the books you you've been reading and such. I got a better one for this. Okay. Cool. Either that or that. It seems to range from book to book. Well, that depends on her personality probably. But she 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 she's more spider than uh, human. That's uh, so I'm gonna have no, I mean, I mean, in the in the last one you posted. Yeah, but um, what I'm saying is, you, as a character, you as Murdoch. Not as a character. I'm, I'm, I'm just trying to grab the concept of her. That's all. Not as a character. Yeah, well, what the last one you posted of the guy with the rapier? That's a drider. That's that's the basic concept. All right. But that's more of a dried official soldier. Lolith has a whole host of creations that she's made, um, primarily spider-like. Some mm. of them just, just like a mass of like legs and teeth, and you know, there's a whole mess of just. Spider it reminds me of Arachne in Greek mythology. But yeah, it's not something you need to concern yourself with at the moment, dude. Uh, I'll be happy to like go through it with you after the session. Yeah, sure. We when are we are we going to the fighters respite now or? So yeah, you guys make your way back across town. You notice that a lot of shops are kind of buckling down. The market's beginning to pack itself up. Um, the bustle is dying down. Uh, the guards are changing shifts. Um, People are kind of making their way to taverns or their own houses. Um, it's a relatively peaceful walk across the city at this point. Apart from the odd horse neigh here and there. Um, you make your way back towards the blacksmith that you found earlier, Toriel. And he's just kind of outside having a cigarette. Nice. Uh, your Smoking out of the pipe. Ooh, trendy. Good day. Uh, I, Good day. Uh, I say is I well, still kind of day. As I approach him. Well, it's evening now, but sure. <laughs> you finished repairs on my hammer. I did indeed. You got my coin. 
I do indeed. He, he taps on his pipe and he leaves it um, on the side of the window. Walks past the forge into the shop. Um, you hear a couple of like bussing around as some like weaponry is moved out of the way, maybe possibly some shields or some plate mail type. Um, he comes back out a few moments later with your Warhammer looking pristine. Excellent. I'll take it and give him... What do we agree on? 75? 80. I'll be right back. I'm pretty sure I remember at 75, if not less. Alright, you caught me. 75. Alright, I guess I'll give him 75 gold. He takes it. All that is ridiculously overpriced, but I guess I set the price myself. Well, if you haven't need any repairs, you know what's fine, me. Yeah. Thank you. Yeah, and you take it in your hand, and it feels a lot better than it did before. Like, the weight is impeccable, the scratches seem to have, like, disappeared, uh, the dings from, like, where it's been hit against blunt objects and, like, um, dulled from hitting against armor. It appears to be almost new. It's even be the leather handles has even been rewrapped. Cool. So does it do an extra one D or one hundred damage now? Um, <laughs> you get a plus one to your "Wow, my weapon looks great" bonus. Oh, I oh, love I that! Love I love when I get a bonus on there. You also get a plus one to "Wow, my weapon won't break soon" bonus. Yeah, that one's overrated. <laughs> but yeah, um, from where you are now, it's not a short walk back to Fire's Respite, if that's where you guys are heading right now. It's pretty, yeah. pretty much where we're heading, yeah. I'm like... So you guys uh, walk past, um, you see a tiefling paladin who's just kind of lazily leaning up against the wall of the Colosse... Uh, Colosse... Colosso? Colosseum? No, the Colosso. It's called the Colosso. <laughs> what a innovative name. It's not a Colosseum. It's just like a fighting pit. Um, Big difference. Yeah, he's just leaned up against the wall and it's like, so... Is, is Garth been with us the entire time? Yeah, Garth has been following you guys it's about. Hasn't said a single word. When, when we were all reading, reading books, books, he was just standing there. Because I transmuted a thing over his mouth made out of rock and he couldn't get it off. He's just been stuffing his face with cheese. Yeah. Reminded of the mark of the gold. But, um. Yeah, uh, he's just lined up against the wall. So, are we doing this? Sure. I mean, Garth. Is Adeline no. here? No, that's. That's Kay it's Kayron, he wants to fight with Garth. Oh yeah, I totally forgot. Well, actually oh, Garth wanted to fight with Kayron. Yeah, uh, Garth kind of turns around and he's like, I'm, I'm not really sure we have time at the moment. Maybe, maybe another day? <laughs> what a cuppa. Kayron just kind of spits on the floor, he walks into the side of Colosseum, uh, he looks down to the pits and as you guys kind of walk past you can see there are two guys already in there just kind of like sparring each other. Uh, there's a various around 60 to 70 people just sitting in the stands like watching and cheering. Um, as these guys just going at it, they appear to be bare fists, like no weapons, just slogging each other. It's not very good. Oh, I'll just, I'll just have to sell for spectator seat this time. Maybe tomorrow he can fight you. Yeah, maybe. Maybe. So you guys make your way past Kairon, um, towards the fighter's respite. Yep. And as you guys enter, um, the layout of the bar is completely different from what you had before. Uh, from first time you came in here, it seemed like a relatively, you know, if you went to find a table, you could find your own table somewhere else. All the tables appear to have been put together. Um, 
the bartender and the barmaid uh, appear to be just like loading up tank tankards with um, either ale or water. Um, it seems as if it's on the house for the time being. Um, looking around the room, there are various um, members of what appear to be whether clan or guild or organization Cillian is part of, all wearing the black cloaks with the clasp uh, fixed to it. Uh, you see a number of other traveler type looking people. Um, there's a few dragonborn here and there. The dwarfs, halflings, tieflings, it's a miasma of different types of people, uh, races, ages. Uh, and so then kind of winks at you guys as you enter and you see to the side um, Adeline is sitting there. She seems to be conversing with a familiar face, a dro, uh, long white hair, slightly frail looking webbed cloak. Um, it's Ayla, Ala even, from mm -hmm. Yeah. Uh, Adeline kind of she pats her hand as you guys enter and she gets up to greet you. Is she eating the cheese? Did you bring the cheese? I did bring the cheese. I hand her half of my cheese. Well, she gladly accepts it. She kind of smells it. She smiles. Cheesy! She ties it up in her own little bundle. And, um, it seems to shrink in size to about uh, the size of a nut. And she puts it in the pocket. Mm -hmm. Well then, um, from what I've managed to gather, this meeting, quote unquote, uh, is more of an audition. Right. Audition? For what? Um, well, I don't have all the details. I assume Cillian's going to give them out. But it seems like you'll be competing for a position within the organization. Oh. I thought this was to help the land, not to be part of some shady organization Cillian runs. She winks at you. She goes, there's more than meets the eye here. I'll take your word for it. As you should. I'm vouching for you. Thank you for that. And she kind of leans in a little closer to you and you watch her eyes turn to a dark black. So don't fuck it up. I'll give my best. She leans back, her eyes go to Hazel again. And she... Sorry, I'm so shady. Please stand up. She returns to Allah and sits down and begins to continue her conversation. So wait, drinks are in the house? <laughs> there are about 30 to 40 different mugs just placed on the side of the bar and they're just filling them up and just leaving them on the bar. Oh, but I want to get my lightning shots. Um, you gather from how serious good look on people's faces are in here that this isn't a social event. Yeah, it's serious business. But lightning shots, they're the best. I guess I just grab a model of stale ale and go over to it's West. It's a, it's a big, just one big table. Yeah, the big steins. Um, yeah, it's just one big table in the center. I suppose like all, we sit, all the tables have been like put together. I suppose we'll sit next to Adeline or Olar or wherever is free right there. I'm back. Well, there. So, as you guys sit down, um, Cillian looks around the table. You see, he begins to like count heads, just like with his hand in the air. It's just, like twelve. Okay, I believe everyone is here. Shall we begin? Everyone cheers and everyone's like, yeah. 
And that's where we'll leave it for today. Okay.